<laughs> hey people, it is Carla and I am here to talk to Raheem Fatima. Yeah, I got your name, Kaboy. And she is a comedian. She's an entrepreneur, and believe it or not, she's only 12 years old. A lot can be learned from her. I look forward to getting to know her. Like always, this show is sponsored by the Institute of Peace, which is an online organization creating peace one conversation at a time. And Fahima, I want you to come to my kids' show for learn English because you'd be perfect for it. I'll talk to you later about it. At the same time, right now, I'm going to ask Fahima to introduce herself as okay. I share this out. Okay, so I am a comedian, a writer, an entrepreneur, and a theater actress. And I am 12 years old. I am a seventh grader. You're a seventh grader and you're doing all that. How did you get started with all that? So we had like a arts fest in our school and I was already taking part in two dramas, directing one and stuff. So, um, yes. You so, are uh, adults, right? But I can't hear you, Carla. You are 12 years old. You say. Yes, I am 12 years old. Go on, talk. Okay. <laughs> uh, so um, I, w I wanted to do something solo, like, which is all about me. Uh, so I asked uh, my dad, what should I do? And it was like almost midnight. And then he told me, you could do stand-up comedy. I mean, you write a lot of things. Before that, I was a writer. I, went, I was into writing when it was hard time on my family. So it was the genre I choose was usually comedy because I like comedy. And then I started comedy um, at a, like a open mic stage. And then I went to open mic from open mic. There I went, Fahim, uh, there I met Fahim Azam. Fahim Bhai, that's what I call him. So uh, I met him and he offered me that he was making a group of like a group of comedians, talented comedians. And he asked me if I could join it. I did, I did a show. Then there I asked um, a few people, uh, actually uh, it was Sir Pervez, who's the project director of the National Incubation Center to let me in to apply for, a, for my startup. I had like a lot of business ideas as well. So he said, yes, that's how I got into the National Incubation Center. And then I got an offer from the theater that we have a role of like a 12, 13 year old girl. Can you do it? Because you're the only 12 year old girl that we know. So I was like, yes. And uh, then I did another one, which I was also playing like a 12 year old girl. So. Yeah. How you said it, it's a long story of how you got into comedy. Can you tell me that story? Okay. So, um, as I said, I wanted to do something on my own because, like, in other dramas and everything I was taking part in, they weren't, it wasn't like about me, it wasn't like solo. So, um, I wanted to go like solo and uh, I said, so, like I, I share everything with my dad and my mom as well. So um, my dad, like he went to sleep. He's like, okay, uh, I'll think of something. And midnight he wakes me up and he's like, you could do stand up comedy. I'm like, how me stand up comedy? Are you sure? It's like, see, 
all those writings that you were sending me were, you know, like texting me and you were sending all these things, you can convert that into stand-up comedy and make it snappy. I did so, I went on my first open mic. I was like, at that time I was really scared. It was my first public speak, which wasn't in school. It was like uh, in public, right? In general public, like I knew no one except my dad. So um, the interesting part is that um, I had a guy, like actually two people there, uh, who were there at my latest show as well, the show I just did. And I mean, they were so happy. They're like, that was this girl who was performing for the first time in her entire life. And I see like four months later, she is doing her own show. So it was, it was very good to see all those people again. I continued my uh, journey. I performed in the Pakistan National Council of Arts and many other places which are very influential and have productive people in there. And uh, then I joined Fahim Azam, as I told earlier. Uh, it was great. I mean, uh, he coaches us all in comedy as well. And uh, that's how I did from show to show and show. So I had my fifth or fourth show with them. Otherwise, now, I've performed like more than seven places. Now, how old were you when you started doing comedy? I was freshly 11. You were 11? Yes. Oy. I just turned 12 in August, so. This is totally inspiring to me. Um, and who was this man who did the, who inspired you to move for, forward in this? I don't know these names. Remember, I am from the United States. I know Rayhan, I'm meeting all kinds of people. So. So his name is Fahim Azam. And he's a comedian, he's an, uh, he's an actor, he's a producer, he's a director. He is an awesome engineer and what was it? Okay, so let's just say it's just nothing that he's not, yeah? That, that's just how I can say. And he inspired me and all the other 20 comedians we have in our group to do stand-up comedy. We have new people come in every show. I mean, like we had another guy come in Temur. He was doing it for the first time, but I mean, he could do it very well. He's also very really young. He's like 20, 22. Like so uh, that's how he inspires and he, he keeps us moving us all and he keeps us all together, which is very hard. And I mean, everyone here look for their own God. But he doesn't. He, he says that, you know, I want to see the young generation going on. My time is finished. Now it's your time to shine. That, that's what he usually says. Wow. In all the meetings we have. I mean, this to me, it's amazing. Do you still go to school and study? Yes, I still go to school and I do study. I score very good marks. I mean, I, um, I am a very good student of school as well. And yeah, I go to school. I, I, I was looking forward to homeschooling as well this year, but I couldn't do it this year. I am looking forward to start it maybe in my ninth grade because my dad says it's, it's going to be more convenient for you then. Just, you know, try to go to school. I usually don't go to school that often. I mean, like, uh, I try to, like, take off, like, one day from the school <laughs> because of my office and everything because I also have to go to the National Incubation Center for my startup and I have another startup as well. So I need to look after, like, two startups, which is hard. What are your two startups? Okay, so one of the startup, which is incubated, is MedSol, which provides healthcare services like uh, taking blood samples, having someone do like uh, physiotherapy at home, and also delivers medicines. So I am their communication manager, and I have to pitch and everything in front of investors and everything. So that's that's my job. 
and uh, for the other one, I am the CEO and founder myself. And for the other one, uh, so I'm also the brand ambassador and the spokesperson for a women entrepreneurship program by Oxfam and Hashi Foundation. <laughs> and that is some uh, that is somewhat very related to my idea. So through that, we are training 10 women in entrepreneurship and sewing cloth bags. Maybe you don't know, but in Pakistan, now polythene bags are completely banned. You cannot find even one like all around Pakistan. But nothing is manufactured now. So uh, what, uh, what we are doing is that we are training women in entrepreneurship and sewing these bags so that they can have their own businesses and sew bags. So what they have done, they say, I be the spokesperson and the brand ambassador. And when I get orders, I can also ask these women and pay them myself to uh, make the bags, the orders I have for me. Because my startup is advertising through cloth bags. So uh, that's what I can do. You are amazing. Oh, thank uh, you very much. When you say you take a day off, do you take a day off like a Friday off from school every week? Or do you do more than that? I mean, like I'm taking tomorrow off, but I usually take Wednesday or Thursday off because Thursday I have my pitching or I have a session at the National Incubation Center. So I have to leave early from the school and I'm taking off tomorrow because I just want to, number one. And the second I have a dentist appointment, that's why. Yeah, Dennis can put you in that position. I'm um, getting braces, so. Ooh. My father was an orthodontist. <laughs> How, what is your favorite thing to study in school? I, uh, my favorite thing to study is history. Like people say you're gonna be a historian when you grow up. That, that's what people say, because I'm the only one in the class who likes history. I mean, it's interesting, yes. It's, it's very interesting. What do you like so much about history? This is something that we could see, like uh, when I studied that all these things that we use today were like invented way back. Then we see that those those are inventions left their legacy, and now we're not reinventing; we're just reusing that, which is good and bad as well. So that's. That's what I think about history. Why do you say good and bad? It's that we're not reinventing for like the new generation. And it's good that we are respecting and we are respecting and we are still using the technique and we are not letting go of that hard work that I did to invent that particular anything. Okay, there's artificial intelligence right now. How are you saying that's not something new? Not something new. Like we cannot make advancements to that particular thing. It wouldn't be like the way of ruling. Like in Pakistan, some of the things are followed from like the Mughal empire. Like most of the things that we have in our government is followed from the Mughal time. So we see we haven't, you know, like things, I mean, respecting history and respecting the Mughals, but there were still flaws, like there are flaws in almost everything, right? So there were still a bit flaws, but we did not try to amend it. We were like, just go with it. Go with the flow. That's the Pakistani statement. Go with the flow. Do you think that's good or bad? I mean, sometimes it's good. Sometimes you have to go with the flow and sometimes it's bad because, you know, like then uh, it's, just, it's just bad sometimes that if you also have to like do something else if something is wrong, right? We just don't have to go with the flow. So. so can you give me an example of a bad thing that that we continue to use in the world? 
all the ten bags. Go with the flow. You see. What kind of bags? I'm sorry. Say it again. Only ten plastic bags. Those yeah. those bags. How can we replace plastic bags? It's clothes bags. That's that's what I'm working on. That's what I have the startup on that I just told you about. Okay, now I don't know if you read about this, but you may want to look into it. There is a substance that has been invented that is stronger than plastic. I think it's made out of leaves and can be used like plastic. Have you heard of that? I think so. I know about like a lot of like I I have researched lately, but I think I came across something like this. I have it like I have it in my saved videos and everything. I'll check again, or no, then you could send me something like this. I need to check it in my saved videos that I get. Um. So you, you like history? What? What part of history do you find most fascinating? The most fascinating is that like people live the same way now. I mean, almost the same way. I mean, uh, like we could say that people, uh, people were, you know, running the Senate and everything. And we're also running the Senate. We have senators and everything now. So like they were very advanced at their time, but now we're very oldie oldies. If you get what I mean. Well, be clear. What do you mean by that? Okay, so I mean that we live the same way. We didn't try to make our own, our own. You know, what do we say that? Our own contribution to that way, or on our own like contribution to the society. That's what I'm trying to say. So what do you want your contribution to society to be? I want to give a solution to them. I want to give them a solution because the government has banned the bags, but they have not given the solution to the public. And now they have nothing to do. And now like nothing is going on in Pakistan. It's, and, and it's like a very big issue these days. So I'm trying to do that. I'm I'm trying to contribute that way into the society, to my comedy as well. You know, sad people they try to laugh. Uh, to my comedy as well, entrepreneurship. I always support SDGs. All my startups uh, support uh, SDGs, and uh, it's also through writing because I write for children. I write for children who are like seven to uh, like nine. And it's it's very interesting what I write. I write on uh, I write online. So I write on storybird.com. Can you tell me one of your stories? Oh yes, it's about two best friends and a babysitter who comes, and then the thing it's like it's just very it's weird. But uh, by the end, uh, like the moral of the story and the name of the story, like. It's just very similar. The name of the story is Never Judge a Babysitter by Her Perfume. <laughs> I love it. Tell me and, the story. Okay, so the story is that there are two girls, Kelly and Hannah. Kelly's parents are going to Mexico for a vacation and they both are home alone. They're very happy. And the last moment <laughs> they know, they have a babysitter come over, Vanessa. So Hannah thinks that her perfume smells like garbage and she should definitely change it, change her hairstyle and her perfume. <laughs> and then they try to do all sorts of things like, you know, say that we, we, I mean, we don't want you to come over and we're not doing anything you say us to. And then they have quite of a fight in between and then what happens, Vanessa is still very sweet and she tries to be more sweet, sweeter, and she takes them to the park and then she makes, tries to make them like understand that first impression has a lot of impact, but it doesn't like take over your relationship with anyone. So please 
don't think of me as a lady with a very bad perfume. I'm a real nice lady. So then they have uh, ice cream at the park. And um, when they come back, they have a vinegar pie, which Vanessa makes. A vinegar pie is a pie which, ha which has some cream inside and it has some vinegar on the top, which was very famous in 1960 in Kansas. I wrote like a very, like you could say, a fictional, like, like a fictional sort of thing. And I, I just don't get it. But like at the end, I wrote like a very, you know, informational thing that you should know about pies if you're a pie lover, like me. So that's what I wrote. Now you wrote, are the two kids, are they in the United States? Or where yes. do they? How they're Muslims, they're, they're, they're Muslims, they just have their names and uh, they're from the United States. How did you decide to have them in the US instead of in Pakistan or? you know, or Islamabad for that matter? Because in Pakistan, we don't have babysitters at all. We don't have babysitters. And I wrote this because many people here, they, they do know about babysitters like the new generation, but they don't have any babysitters come over. They don't have, they, they do have their entertainment and everything that way, they don't, but they don't get to like read that stuff that they watch for entertainment as well. So what I'm trying to do is that the the like like the babysitter thing that you have in America. I mean, we don't have it in Pakistan. I knew I know it because I watch like a lot of TV shows and stuff. So uh, I'm trying to you know go, give those kids what they watch for entertainment, also for reading because they like it here in Pakistan. But we uh, unfortunately we don't have that concept yet of babysitter because maybe it's it's, it's just Pakistan. And, uh, you know, like having someone who you don't know very good in coming into your house with your kids is like, this concept is pretty alien right now to our, you know, el to the other people right now. But the new generation is liking it. Now, I don't quite understand, and I'm going to ask you to explain this to me. How, um, what do you do? Your parents may go out for a night with friends. Who stays with the children? In Pakistan, there is no concept of like, you know, like sleepovers and stuff. Parents don't let like their children go to anyone's house that, that often. I mean, unless you're best friends, you can go to their house, come back after like, maximum is a four hours, not more than that. So that's like the, some like, uh, like it's like a tradition in Pakistan. We don't let our kids go to someone else's house for like more than four hours. Four hours is like a limit. Like parents go like, what is happening? What is happening to the world? Where is our child? So that, that's, what, that's what happens. Really? So, uh, Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's, just, it's just like that. So I, I really want that um, because if I, I even said that to my dad that, I mean, I want to go to a sleepover to my friends. They're like, no, Vita, you cannot go there. You cannot spend, you cannot spend a night there at someone else's house under someone else's roof. You cannot do that. Your father, your father is blessed. From, like by the God, he has his own roof. I mean, he has his own house. Why don't you sleep here? What's the problem? Yes. Well, what That's happens if your parents are, your weddings are pretty elaborate. What happens when you're going to, a, they're going to a wedding and you're not invited? What, how do they handle that? Well, I, I don't get it. Uh, uh, let me try again. Um, here, let's say my parents and I was a little girl were invited to a wedding, but I was not invited. Who would take oh, that? That cannot be possible in Pakistan. That's why I wasn't understanding the thing. Oh. If it is written, Mr. Imtiaz Fazil with family, 
even if it is written mr imtiaz they're going to go and eat the dinner because they have a dinner for free okay 500 rupees and the whole family is good meal you see the mentality of pakistanis so you're always with your parents wherever they go everyone goes. no actually my parents is like a bit different because but the typical pakistani parents they try to keep their children with them at like all times all times trust me that's amazing because that did not does not happen here can you tell me something to make me laugh okay so um i'm really sorry but all my jokes are in punjabi or they're in urdu so you cannot understand and when i translate them both then it's not going to be that funny so it's just relatable for our pakistani people you need to start telling american not american jokes but jokes in english oh yeah i am really looking very much looking forward to that but i think like i don't have much market in pakistan because people do know people like i also like gabriel iglesias and everything right like jeff denham and whatever you have there like all the comedians are very good trevor noah so i do understand them i, I mean i laugh a lot but i cannot relate to them because i live in pakistan right so even if i tell jokes and understand they live in pakistan and i'm telling american jokes so that's a different but i am uh, actually i had a friend come over from australia who was one uh, like uh, he's like a coach i mean he he's very really, like he's very really close to my heart he uh he was an acting coach a theater acting coach he's also been in films and um he wanted to hear my comedy as well but he couldn't because of the whole pakistani thing because it wasn't relatable to him so that after that i decided that i need to have comedy and you know like with you know western style as well with the american australian canadian style as well which is very important i believe have you traveled to the united states yet no uh, i haven't but i have like a lot like most of my family lives there like most of the people i love in the family they live there that's so what are you coming Yes, I'm thinking of coming in the uh, summer vacations because that's the only time I have free. Like here, the winter vacations are like one week and a few again. That's that's what we have. What we have here. And where are, where is your family located? So we are located uh, in Islamabad. My dad's in the Pakistan <laughs> Air Force. So we have uh, like a military compound sort of thing where we live. which is a very good place we live near the mountains that you could go hiking the kind of mountain is from my house if you walk a bit i'm talking about your family in the united states where are they located yeah okay so uh there my family um uh, is uh like so my uncle there is located in pennsylvania alequipa i believe yeah yeah and what I grew up in Pennsylvania. Go on. So sweet. <laughs> Go on. Yes. And my aunt lives in Brooklyn or New York. I mean half her family lives in New York, half the half of them live in Brooklyn. So they're because they're a very large family because her uh, father-in-law moved there when he was a very young boy and then he tried to bring like uh, take people as many people with him as possible from the village so it was like half the village was gone there so it was like a lot of people like minimum it's like 30 people so wow that's what that's we have there that's a very big a lot of other but like two major and my aunt and my uncle like my paternal uncle and my maternal aunt that is amazing 
So because they live in America, so this is very cool. And I can, you know, communicate with them easily because when they come to Pakistan, like, uh, you know, like uh, my aunt's kids come to Pakistan, it's very hard for them to, you know, communicate in Urdu and both in Punjabi as well. So it's just very hard for them. And then they're trying uh, to speak Urdu. So then I am the translator uh, at the, at the you know, the recipe sort of thing. Do you enjoy doing that? Yes. I mean, this is really fun. Because all other people do know English, but it's not that good enough to be, you know, like, you know, like American people simply cannot understand that Pakistani Desi style English. So that, that, that's just very good because our Urdu and our Punjabi is very good as compared to English. Your English is beautiful. Thank you very much. Where did you learn it? Okay, so I go to a school, which except the Urdu lesson, you cannot speak Urdu at all day, okay? You cannot speak Urdu at any time of the day you are at school, except Urdu lesson. That's an exception. So uh, we need to speak English because it's all Cambridge and Harvard and everything. It's Cambridge, yes. Yeah, it's, it's Cambridge. It's all from uh, England, I think. Well, Harvard is in the United States. I don't know. Uh, I, <laughs> it's not the big names. Other the big names. But this, you're amazing. Thank you. I feel honored to have been able to meet you. I need to thank Rayhan. For thank you very much. I mean, uh, people like you are saying I am great. I mean, I cannot sleep all night. It's uh, actually it's midnight in Pakistan. It's even more than midnight. It's like one a.m. right now, I almost know. one a.m. <laughs> so yes, I'm, so, I'm still very fresh. I mean, I couldn't sleep because I had an interview. When do you need to go tomorrow? When do you need to wake up to go to school? No, I don't have to go to school tomorrow uh, because I'm going to be waking up like, I think, eight. I wake up early. So I need to go, like, get up at eight and I have to go to the hospital, like to the dentist. And maybe then he, that dentist would send me to the orthodontist. So, yes. That's no fun. And I also have to go to the hospital because of my brother. He, he was diagnosed with blood cancer and that's when I started writing. So, um, I mean, he has recovered, but he still has to go after like, you know, one or two months. And he's doing well? Yes, he's doing very well. He was diagnosed when he was two and now he's four. I mean, it's like almost two years. And he's a real fighter, you know, he's my inspiration. Ibrahim. How cool. And he's four now, or how old is he now? He's four right now. I mean, right now, he's four. Now, how many brothers and sisters do you have? So it's only me and my brother, that's it. We have a gap of like eight years. He's four and I'm 12, so. That's a pretty big gap. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, because of that, we usually don't get along with each other. But, like, we're, because we're siblings, then we kind of get along some things. But that's some very, things. very, very normal. I had a brother nine years older than me, and my sister is ten years older than me. We yes, that must be difficult as well. Yes, it is. Total miscommunication at times <laughs> because you have like a nine like nine year older brother that you have from you and your sister which is very hard because they don't get the voice of babies and you don't get the voice of all these so. right and even now although we're closer together because of age we mm -hmm. still have that going on often well i mean like you guys are grown-ups now like grown-ups yeah <laughs> <laughs> interesting story we're not going to talk about it now i am so glad i got to meet you 
Thank you very much, Carla. I am privileged. Just don't, don't say again and again that I'm so great. I cannot sleep all night, you know that? I mean, it's just, it's just very, it's just very, some, it's just something very special to me. I mean, I am called very productive. I am called very, like, very good, a very beautiful child and everything every day. But by people like you, it's sometimes, it's this, this thing that, really comes to me that I have an achievement that that sort of a feeling comes into me you have you're an amazing 12 year old young lady you really are and I'm honored by you and uh in like the whole interview I've seen the laughter therapy I mean um how can I join it Sure, we can talk about that. Um, sure, you can come to a laughter meditation or I can do one specifically for you. I'd be happy to do it. I mean, because uh, it's very important for me to laugh as well because, you know, like, uh, uh, like recently I had this problem that I won't smile at all. I mean, no smiles, blank faces. Not and then I to smile and laugh a lot. Now I like laugh. I usually laugh a lot, and I don't know whether my microphone can get that much laugh. That's why I'm trying to control it each time because I see you laugh and then I want to laugh. So that's is the microphone that I think of is, but you know, keeps me. Oh, please laugh with me. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, don't make that 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 loud voice. But I I I laugh a lot. I mean, I am moving like this this when I laugh. <laughs> we will talk more about that. I do need to end this now. Unfortunately, I could talk to you for a much longer time. Um, with that, I want to thank you for talking coming and speaking with me tonight it was for me it was a blessing thank you very much i am i feel honored to call by people like you who are very productive and i mean you you people are what make the world a better place by making people laugh as well and uh by uh telling people how to speak English and, you know, educating them about uh, English. I was also uh, thinking to do something the same because many girls in Pakistan don't have such an, uh, like, don't have good English. And then later on, this becomes like a, like a thing that they cannot communicate with people who are from the States or like wherever. Even if like they cannot communicate to people, were in Pakistan and have a good English because they feel belittled. So that's something that I really want to work on and to teach girls English. So I wanted to uh, talk to you about this. So because yes. you already teach English. Absolutely. What? We can do that. We should do that. But right now I really need to sh close the show. So I want to remind people that um the show is sponsored by the institute of peace which is an online organization creating peace one conversation at a time and i will be back for more interviews as you all know and we're going to laugh our way out and i better hear this young lady laughing with me <laughs> Ho 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 ho!